So let's take a look now at the edge loop tool with the sub D toolkit. And we're going to try and create um, a geometry that would be described as a splayed geometry making use of the edge loop tool. So once again, I'm going to start with a sub D box that's one by one by one in the X, Y, and Z axes. I'm going to make it a little bit more rectangular this time. Um, and I'm going to just swap into unsmooth mode with the tab. And we're going to come up here to the insert edge loop or edge, ling, uh, edge ring tool. So I'm going to click on that. Um, normally in like Blender or Maya, I always go for what I'd call loop. I've never actually really heard of ring, I don't think, until I've gotten into sub D with Rhino. But I want to go with ring from my experimentation so far with it. Ring, if we click on one of these edges, we'll try and select all of the... Uh, edges in our geometry that are kind of, you know, running perpendicular to one another. And if I hit enter, what it'll enable us to do is to create basically a ring of edges around our output. So I'm just going to click one here, and I'm going to do it again. I want to do a ring and create them, you know, here. And then we'll create another ring going around this side, like so. In fact, I actually wanted to do it this way, so we'll just go and perk that up uh, like that. And I actually also wanted, in fact, I want to add one extra um, ring to this. So in here, and I might just slide this edge over like that and like that. Um, so what I'm going to try and create from this is a geometry that's almost like a branching effect that splays out from lots of different directions as we kind of move up. So I'm actually going to extrude from multiple faces this time. Um, so I'm going to hit the extrude button like that. And what they'll actually do is they'll all stick together. So they're not separate boxes that we've extruded up. If we extruded them one by one, um, like if I did this, then this, You'll notice if I grab the top face, it's disconnected from its neighbor. But when you extrude them all together, that disconnect doesn't occur and the faces get stuck to one another. So I'll kind of move those guys over to the side here like that. And I'm going to do the same for these four up here. We're going to extrude up and move it across like that. And then we can start splaying out again. So I'm going to splay out individually now. So I might actually grab these two move them across like that, grab these two, extrude up, and move out across like that. Might grab these two, extrude, oops, didn't get the extrude there, got the move, extrude up, and move across like this. And then these ones as well, we'll extrude up, missed it again, can be a bit frustrating sometimes. And then we'll move them across like that. So we're starting to get a little bit of a branching effect in our geometry. And now that I've got all of those ones, I can start to go and create some branching effects. So if I hit tab, you'll see I get quite a blobby kind of geometry coming through here. Um, I might just manipulate these things a little bit. Like maybe we move these edge rings over a little bit get a little bit more of a splay coming out um, in this geometry type. So as always, your sub-D modeling is a little bit by eye, trying to you know, massage that into an output that you're kind of happy with uh, until you kind of splay that thing out a little bit. So you can sit around and manipulate this yourself until you get a nice splay through.